So I got an email, um, I got an email a few weeks ago um, from someone wondering about the position of Liu Yiming and uh, his suggestion that practicing is, is not um, going to return us to the Tao, that practicing um, energy, energy arts, internal arts, um, internal alchemy um, will not get us there. And uh, the person writing this email, um, you know, was asking me as, as a, a Long Wen Pai person, this is a patriarch of the Long Wen Pai, and he seems to be suggesting something quite radical, um, that we should just give up our, our practice and uh, do something else. Um, and what do I, what's my position on this? And uh, at the same time, I heard from another friend that this sort of discussion has become quite quite uh, uh, popular on the internet um, and it's actually a, a discussion that goes way way back um, both in in my life so to back you know into the 90s when I first started practicing this was a discussion back then and hundreds and hundreds of years um, the first time I'm aware of it popping up in history and I'm sure it's it's much earlier than this uh, is um, in in Chan discourse, right? So you have the classic um, the classic story of of Hui Ning, Hui Neng, the I can't remember which generation patriarch he is, um, and his famous response to cleaning the mirror poem, and he says, uh, you know, so the first the first uh, poem is uh, by another person says, you know, you need to, uh, you know keep your mirror clean, a metaphor of clean, keeping the mind clean um, so that you have clarity and can see. Um, and Hui Neng Shou, he goes, well, um, if everything is empty, then the mirror is empty and there's no, there's, no, uh, there's no mirror for dust to fall upon and accumulate on. So there's nothing to clean, right? So this goes, so it's, 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 it's it's there um, from much earlier than because Louis Ming is Middle Qing, which uh, me what, 200 years ago, I think is what seven, 17th, 18th century, um, and um, the Hui Neng is quite a bit earlier. Although I believe that story was actually written later, so you always got to be careful about that. Um, and it pops up in Taoist uh, Taoist sources as well. Uh, um, my good, my good friend, Professor Paul Crow, who's my first teacher, uh, he is a specialist on Li Dao Chun, who is a, a famous Taoist in the Song Dynasty. Um, and I remember doing a, a grad seminar with him, looking at some of these, some of this stuff, and, and we looking at Li Dao Chun's uh, Zhong He Ji. Um, and in that text as well, you have uh, this really interesting section where he does he's basically the same thing. He's like, look, true cultivation is not practices. It's not it's not doing um, energy or internal work. It's something else. Uh, and he goes through. He he actually lists out a very interesting section. Lists out all these different practices. And he said, it's not this. It's not this. It's not this. You know, it's not opening the spine it's not uh doing this it's all these different practices that were uh circulating during the song dynasty very quite interesting um just get a sense of what they were doing back then it says not that it's something else right it's something else it's something else um and often in historical discourse and whatnot they they kind of they they this debate gets broken to, gets called the gradual versus sudden debate right so is Enlightenment, if it's in Chan Buddhist source, so Kai Wu, the enlightenment, is it uh, a gradual thing that you work to bit by bit, or is it um, sudden, right? And um, and so this, because you have the, the, the Taoism and the Buddhist and the, and the Confucian just kind of gets mixed together, right? There's a lot of uh, bleeding from one into the other. And so Taoists really picked up this as well. And so my sense with Louis Ming is he's just picking up something that's that's been there all along. Um, it's just that Louis Ming um, is very popular in the West um, in English language sources. I think he's much more popular in English language sources than he is here in China, um, where I am right now. Um, you know, I, I practice mostly with Chinese practitioners, um, at least I am right now, and we never talk about him. 
um, he's just he's he's kind of there, but we don't we don't you know Lu Dongbin is much more kind of the guy for our lineage. Um, that being said, what he's talking about, is, and he breaks it down to the the shang de and and xia de the the superior virtue and and lesser virtue, and uh, he's Louis Louis Ming now. He's saying that you know um, practicing practices. So working with energy, working with qi, cultivating qi, whatnot, is lesser virtue, right? Um, that what we want to do is understand what greater virtue is, what are saying, what what real real cultivation is, because it's not that. And so I think, sort of the kind of the sad thing that's happened is there's a lot of readers who read that and they go, oh, so I shouldn't practice. Um, and I. I don't, I don't, I don't see it that way. Um, uh, I have, um, you know, I've, uh, um, the I, the thing is, practicing are tools, right? So all these practices are just tools. They're not the end goal. They can help us get to the end goal, but they're not the end goal themselves. And so if we become attached to the tools, then problems can arise. Right. Sometimes it'll be a tool that's not good for us. We need to switch tools, right? Try a different mode of practice. Um, sometimes we need to try something else, um, and that's why in our lineage we 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 make a distinction between xiu and lian, or cultivation and practice. At least what I translate as cultivation and practice. So for our lineage, um, because I, I've had a number of students come to me, not not just this email a few weeks ago, but before when I was teaching um, in person, I had a lot of students ask. Ask me this as well. So um, you know, the cultivation is um, is is the big picture of what we're doing. It's 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 coming to terms with what the self is, and moving past the self, uh, and returning to the Tao. Uh, practices are tools that we use to get there, right? Um, so practice the tools are they useful? Yeah, they're tools. They do stuff, right? We can learn so much from tools, and um, they can be quite powerful. Right, uh, and and the main tool that I use is internal alchemy, um, and it's a wonderful tool for for getting those work done. But you can't get attached to it. As soon as you get attached to it, then problems can arise. Right, cultivation happens. Um, integrating what hap integrating what we learn from practicing internal alchemy. Right, integrating that into the self and and realizing the self. Right. Um, and so that's, it's, 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 so yes, these practices are important. They are valuable. They are worth doing. Um, I've seen a number of times, um, over the course of my life, people who have gotten this idea that we shouldn't practice, um, usually they're fairly intellectual. And I've seen that they get stuck. They get stuck really easy where they are because they're waiting for sudden enlightenment but it doesn't really arise. <laughs> it's like, okay, I'm not supposed to actually do anything because that would be gradual. I'd be doing something. It should be sudden, but it hasn't happened yet. And they kind of get stuck, right? Um, you know, another metaphor that, that comes up with this, that's the way it's talked, it's like um, um, sudden enlightenment is like jumping from the shore into the ocean. Right, it's just sudden. You just do it. There's you're, one moment you're on the shore, the next moment you're in the ocean. There's no gradual thing that happens, right? Um, and then I guess um, from the the, the sort of the, the gradual perspective, the reply to that could be: This is one I thought of, anyways. Is yeah, but you got to get to the the ocean first, be able to jump into it, right? So if you're you know, miles away from the ocean, then you can try and jumping in the ocean all you want. You're not going to, it's not going to happen. Um, so there is a process. There is work to be done. There is effort. Um, and and so the work, the work is work to be done, right? And so our lineage, the Lumen Pai, has, has put a curriculum together that says, well, look, if you use these tools, you apply these tools, it, you get pretty good success rate, you know. Um, it, it's worked for a number of people in the past. Uh, it's worked for us. Uh, if you want to give it a try, give it a try, right? Um, are there other ways? Yes. Um, can you do it without this? Yes. Is this the only thing? Um, 
No, right? So you don't want to get too hooked into, uh, okay, I got a master activating the lower dawn ten. If I don't get that, then I'm, I'm not going to have self-realization. I'm not going to be able to, um, you know, take it, take it, take things to the next level. Um, no, I mean, it's just, if you get activate your Dantian, it's just kind of fun and, and some other stuff happens and you might learn something in the process, but you don't need to, right? There is something else going on. And so I think what Liu Ming and Li Dao Chun and, and, and uh, Hui Nan, are, they're, what they're doing is they're saying, look, this practice is, is not the whole thing. Be aware, there is something more. There's something going on. There is this project of cultivation. Um, and it's up to us to figure that out. It's up to us to, to, to get through, to, to find our way, to find our way back to the source, back to the Tao. Okay. So I uh, hope that's helpful. Uh, sorry for the, the poor production quality. I'm, I'm over here in China. Um, my studio is at home packed up. Um, but uh, hopefully this finds you well and good and I'll, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.